Let's go over the parts for the DIY kit. Make sure you have your collapsible base, your thumb screws, and your weld nuts. Your cooktop will have your two main bars and your four tabs. Once you get over to your fuel chamber door, make sure you have your door itself and the rod. Also your weldable hinge. On the intake, make sure you have your pre-drilled hole. You'll need your damper, your damper rod, and your coal grate. Ash pan, you'll need a spring handle and the rod itself and the back plate. Your chimney and your carry handle. Let's put the intake chamber together first. Make sure that you have your coal grate. Um, that's going to slide right into the back here. Make sure that you have your damper rod. That's going to go into the pre-drilled hole. And make sure you have your damper door itself. Now the easiest way I find to do this is I'm going to grab a one inch block. Anything that's one inch. I'll set it on the bottom here. And then slide your coal grate right inside. This will give you the spacing that you'll need on the bottom. Go ahead and grab your machine, make sure it's flush to the back, and just weld it in place. I like to weld it um, as many places I, as I can. You can usually get four good welds on each side, plus a couple in the back um, where the grate rises up. Once you have it all welded up, go ahead and, and remove your one inch spacer. And now you can stand it up and you're going to need your damper rod. This part here can be a little tricky. You need both hands, but I like to put the damper rod um, into the pre-drilled hold, and you'll try to hold it to where it's just offset to the side. Line up your two holes on your damper door itself. Get them in place, and make sure it's aligned with your damper rod. Make sure everything, you got enough space on each side. You'll have to align it, and you can go ahead and weld it in right there through the holes directly to the rod itself. Once it's welded, go ahead and make sure it operates correctly. If you, for some reason, you do have a little binding, you can usually take a flap wheel and make some adjustments. Next, let's go ahead and build the fuel chamber. You'll need your weldable hinge. I like to measure um, directly center, so it's a four inch chamber. I'm gonna mark it at two inches. Once I have my mark, I can grab my weldable hinge and make sure that I can center it right on top of my fuel chamber. This part's a little intricate because you're trying to hold the hinge while you weld that one side. Just really make sure that you get one edge of that weldable hinge hanging over the edge. That way you'll be able to weld your fuel chamber door to that edge that's hanging over. So I have it tacked here. Before I go any further, I'm going to make sure everything is still aligned, make sure my hinge is still operating. Once I'm sure that it's working correctly, I'll go ahead and I'll weld it out. Now it's time to build the ash pan. This is pretty straightforward. You'll take your back plate here, and then you'll also take your bottom ash pan itself. Make sure you have your spring handle, and your 5 16 rod. You can take it and just line it up on a flat surface like here I'm putting it against this square and I'm going to center my ash pan right in between. Make sure I'm leaving room on each side so that it'll lock into the intake chamber once it slides in. Go ahead and put yourself a tack in the center and then I like to myself I like to weld both edges and put a nice little bead right in the center there. Once you get that welded up, just put your ash pan in a position to where you can center this rod. You can use any type of spacer or anything that you may have lying around. I'm just going to put a mark directly center of this back pan of the ash pan. Once I have my mark, I know I can grab my rod and just center it um, on this back plate. Once you tack it, it's going to pull a little bit. Now's the time you can make any adjustments just to make sure that everything is centered. Once that's good, just grab your machine, your welding machine, and go ahead and weld it in place. Once it's all welded together, you can take your spring handle 
and you can just put a weld right on the back side of your rod and you can clean that up with a flap wheel whatever you need be careful because that spring handle does tend to burn through pretty easily now that we have all of our pieces pretty much fabricated now it's time to start putting it all together I like to grab a square and you're gonna take your chimney you'll lay down your intake your chimney and then you'll take your fuel chamber making sure that your hinge is on top and you're gonna just get everything um, squared away and lined up you may find that the ears on your fuel chamber have kind of um, expanded a little bit now's the time you can usually take a hammer or or something else to smash that down so that you can close that gap that you have right along this seam here then weld it up now let's put together the collapsible base make sure you have your thumb screws and your weld nuts make sure that the flame is um, facing to the left if you're looking directly at it put your side <coughs> side plates in I like to grab a crescent wrench and what I'm going to do now is just kind of make sure everything's uh, nice and aligned. There's enough flexibility here. You can make all the adjustments that you need to make sure everything's straight up. Go ahead and grab your tabs, bend your tabs in. Once the tabs are bent, I like to grab the rocket stove and just double check, make sure everything fits correctly. Once I feel like everything is fitting in place like it should, it's time to start welding on it. First, you'll take your thumb screws and your weld nuts and you're just gonna align them in the hole, making sure that your thumb screws are on the outside and the weld nuts are on the outside. You'll line that hole up and you can hold it any way you can. Sometimes just putting a nut on the other side to hold things in place will help out. Once you get that in place, just go ahead and weld the weld nuts onto those tabs. Once the weld nuts are welded in place, don't forget you'll need to weld all of these seams where you uh, pre-bent the tabs. And the cooktop is pretty self-explanatory. You can see you just weld the four tabs all the way around it, put your cross on, put your handle on, your ash pan should now slide in place. Um, and this is what it should look like here. Your tabs are all welded, the thumb screws are in place, your hinge is welded on, your fuel door with your, uh, with your handle, and there it is, all finished up.